Hello everyone. In this introduction to Unity video, we are going to explore materials. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So firstly, let's answer the age-old question, what is a material? A material is a way of applying a texture or a colour or just sheer imagery to any object in Unity. So if you have a model, if you have an object, if you have a plane, if you have a terrain, it would require a material. Even something like a skybox requires a material. And sometimes that can be fed via a texture. If not, it can just be a simple colored material. So let's create a material. In our project window, we can right click, go to create, and about a third of the way down, you'll see material. We can name this anything we want. I'm just going to call this blue. You'll notice over here on the right hand side in the inspector panel, we have a multitude of options. The first one being shader. Now, as this video is specifically about materials and not shaders, I am going to keep my shader as standard. Going down, we have a couple of different rendering modes. Opaque means that we cannot see through whatever object this material would be attached to. We then have cutout, fade and transparent. Obviously, transparent means that you cannot see through it. The other two give you an option to create a translucent kind of feel. So, for example, if we were to attach this material to this object, we'd be able to change the rendering mode to fade or cutout or transparent or as it's uh, by standard, opaque. Now, I've always found the best thing to do when trying to get the perfect material is to attach the material to the object before modification. So let's do that. Let's drag this material onto this object. We can just drag and drop. We're not going to see any difference at the moment because this material is still in its default phase much like the material that would have been attached to this default cube. At this point, we can change a couple of things. Now, as we've named this material blue, let's click the palette here and let's change to blue. And you can see that that material changes real time and it also changes whatever object it is attached to. So we can now see that that material labeled blue is quite literally now blue and it's made whatever object it's attached to blue as well. We also have the option of adding albedo. If we click the little radial button there we could actually select one of these textures and you can see if I select this blue texture here it does indeed change very slightly however we cannot see it quite as clearly as we should be able to. If we were to set the color palette back to white we'd be able to see an actual representation of the texture which is inside that material. Now, going down, we have a metallic option, and this works in the same way. If we were to have a specific texture used for metallic, we'd be able to apply that. In this case, because we don't, we can modify the metallic feel by changing this slider. It has a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Everything in between you can see changing as we move the slider along. The exact same applies to smoothness. And we can see here, we can make it less smooth or more smooth. And you can see the light bouncing off depending on where we place the slider. The source changes the smoothness texture and channel as we can see as I've hovered over it. And that is a bonus little feature here. If you want to know what something does in Unity, you can always hover over and it will tell you what it does. In this case, let's change the metallic alpha to albedo alpha. And we can see just how much it changes. Most of the time, playing around with these first few options will be satisfactory for what you're trying to create with your material. However, you may need to go a little further depending on what you're trying to create here. If we go further down, we can see the next one, normal map. A normal map is a way of making an object look slightly three-dimensional, even though it is not. 
In this case, we know that this particular object is not three dimensional. There are no bumps on it or anything. It looks flat. However, applying a normal map to the material can give it a three dimensional look, make it look bumpy. To do that, take the original texture and duplicate it by holding control and pressing D. And then we can change the texture type to normal map. And realistically, there are two types of normal map. There is a grayscale and non grayscale. At the moment, this is non grayscale because it's not ticked. Everything else will do just fine. We can click apply. If we click back to our material, we can then apply this normal map to here. And remember earlier when we selected the little button there to find our texture, we can actually drag and drop textures and normal maps into these boxes. And already you should be able to see that this object has now been given a slightly bumpy look. That is the way the light is reflecting and refracting and hitting and everything around so we can see it in a slightly different manner. We can increase the normal map to give it a slightly different look. So we can see we have a bit of a shiny plastic look. So this is a great way of modifying your material so as it can look slightly different, make it more customized to what you are trying to create here. If we were to change this to a grayscale, you would see how much this impacts the result. So let's tick grayscale and click apply. And we can see already just how much that is affecting our material. Now a normal map, if we reset it to one, is basically as it is there. However, we can actually inverse the normal map. So you can see just how much it does change depending on whether you have a positive or a negative. Now a height map works the same kind of way. You can use a height map to make this look higher, taller. So once again, it works slightly the same way as a normal map. It gives it that extra look of 3D rather than being a flat surface. Occlusion, again, occlusion is a nice way of adding an extra depth to how your object will look when the material is attached. And the same applies for detail mask. So it's basically a secondary mask on top. Now going a bit further down, we have tiling and offset. This is a way of duplicating the same texture on the material. So you don't have to have multiple objects. For example, if I want to have two down and two across, I would be doing that, duplicating, bringing down and bringing across. Tiling helps us eliminate all of that. So we've had to create four, uh, three extra objects there that we don't necessarily need. Tiling will do all that for us. So back on the material, we can have the tiling set as two by two. And now one single object is actually duplicated and we can see exactly how it looks. The offset is a way of changing how and where the seamless connection occurs. So in this case, by standard, it should be zero and zero. However, if you want to modify it very slightly, you can change things. So if I have 0.5 and 0.5, you can see how that has changed the materials look. Same applies for everything below. So everything we've dealt with above, we have for the secondary uh, map. So everything layered on top, there's your tiling, there's your normal map for it. Everything is as it should be. Now your specular highlights, if we untick, you can see that they do have a significant impact on how your object will appear with your material. This basically helps the light. And you can see if we untick reflections, how much that has an impact. Obviously not quite as much as the highlights because it's not working quite as hard. However, if you want smoothness and if you want a plasticky kind of maybe rained on look, then you should probably have both of those ticked. The next two down aren't gonna to make too much of a difference at first glance. When you enable GPU instancing, you have to remember that you are going to drain some resources there. 
So just keep that in mind whenever you want to play around with any materials. As I say, by default, most of these options are pretty standard. But I say in a lot of uh, my instructional videos that you should always play around with materials. Materials are your friend in Unity. You can do so much with them. And I would say they are probably the most underrated aspect of Unity. There is so much that you can do. So we have gone from creating just a flat blue cube to creating something crazy, I would say. I wouldn't say realistic because let's face it, this texture is not realistic. However, we can play around with a lot of this and do many different things. If we go back to the rendering mode and let's choose transparent and we can take this it's not going to make too much of an impact on this because of the way this is set up for, through its transparency however if we were to select fade we would be able to see exactly how much we can fade now i've always found the transparent option to be not buggy but it doesn't always work necessarily the way you want to the two options that you should always try and use in the standard shader is opaque and fade. Cut out and transparent won't necessarily quite do the same thing. Transparent will work if you have the setup correct. However, we do not have the correct setup here. So we'll stick with fade and we can change the alpha. High, 255, low, zero. Obviously, zero means it completely disappears. 255 means it's completely visible. So you can actually work with some of this to basically have all of that see-through, translucent or opaque. And another great feature about materials is that we can duplicate them and change them around. So if we were to duplicate this and let's change it to red, we'd be able to apply the same logic and have a red texture. And what we can do is if I duplicate this cube, move it outwards and apply the red material, it's as simple as that. That's how easy it is to create, manipulate and modify materials in Unity. As I said earlier, I always think it's best to play around with materials, modify them, see what effects you can create because they are incredibly useful on many, many different levels. I hope this video has been useful to you in creating materials and learning a little bit more about them. Remember to subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I upload another video in this series. I hope to see you around in another one of my videos.